everybody welcome back to my channel and to the floor of my bedroom where we haven't filmed for a really long time today i really wanted to sit down and do a chatty video on nailing your disney store interview since i posted my own personal experience working at the disney store the reaction to that video has been insane i've had so many messages from people wondering how they can do well in their group interview as somebody with anxiety or as somebody who has never done a group interview before so i really hope that this video will be helpful so without any further babbling let me jump into my top 10 tips for nailing your Disney store group interview. Now these are in no particular order, they're just what came to me as I sat down and really gave this process some thought. So the first thing that I would say when you go in for your group interview is that you would be greeted on stage probably by your manager or somebody who is a senior cast member who's going to take everybody all upstairs and introduce them to the person that's going to conduct your interview. So I noticed when I went in for my interview that we were all kind of left to our own devices to rock around the stage a little bit and the stage is essentially the shop floor. So already you're at an advantage if you know that the stage is the shop floor and that you don't refer to it as the shop floor. But during this point when everybody is just a little bit early and kind of walking around, looking at the products, looking at the merch, you are being judged. It's awful to say, but how you interact with people, how you come across on the stage, and how you interact with other people who are about to go into your group interview with you is super important. Do you chat with other people? Do you smile? And those kind of indicators straight off the bat are what you need to be making sure that you are nailing. Because after all, you're going to be working in the Disney store, and that requires communication with people all the time. There will never be a moment when you are left to your own devices in the store. So being able to communicate and showing that you are a nice, friendly, personable person before you even get into that group interview is really important. Getting into the nitty gritty of the interview itself, there are certain things that you need to make sure that you get across. So a common icebreaker for Disney interviewers is to ask everybody who their favorite Disney character is. Now this seems like a really simple question, but actually there's a lot behind this. The character you pick is often incredibly representative and very close to your own personality. So for me, I picked Belle. Belle is intelligent. She loves her books. She doesn't care what anybody thinks. She loves her father. She doesn't take any nonsense, but she's also incredibly sweet and kind and endearing. And I feel like if there was a Disney character that that would represent me. So if you're going in and you're picking somebody like Gaston, the interviewers are picking up those character traits that are maybe not so desirable in you. Those are the kind of things we want to avoid and we want to stick to good holes from characters that you feel genuinely represent your personality. It can seem like a really simple straightforward question, but there's a lot of weight behind the psychology of what you actually choose. People are often really misconstrued about a job at the Disney store. I want you to go in with your eyes wide open as to what you might expect. So you need to remember that Disney is a business. It is a brand, it is there to make money and they need you to sell. Yes, they need you to be fantastic and engaged and bubbly and bright on the stage, but they need you to sell their merch. And that is what the key bottom line comes down to. So you need to be prepared to sell and you need to get that across in your interview. Do you have any sales experience? Do you have anything in your past that means you are fantastic for this role? Even if it's group work in school, did you help your mom and dad in a shop before? Anything along those lines, any work experience that you feel like you can bring that will show that you are going to thrive in a sales environment. So you're not going in and you're saying, I love Disney and I'm fantastic and I want to be a princess. You're going in with the intention of conveying that Disney is a brand and you're willing to work really hard to make sure that those sales targets are met. Sales targets and performance indicators are a key aspect of what Disney does and of everyday life in Disney store. So you need to be prepared to meet those targets. So alongside that ability to sell, you want to make sure that you know things like the Disney stores are standardized across the world, that when you walk into a Disney store in Rome, it's the same as walking into the Dublin store. And that can make guests feel really at home and really familiar with the brand and with the products that they're going in to hopefully buy from you. Have you noticed anything specific about the cast members? Do they give you a fact, which everybody should be doing when you walk into the store and when you pick up a product? Or even when you're at the till, have they mentioned something to you about what you've bought that makes you think, oh, that's cool that person really knows their stuff. I would say that Disney knowledge is not absolutely key, but it is really helpful if you have a couple of good solid facts under your belt that you can bring to the table at the interview day. And this is purely because as a cast member, you're going to be asked to give people facts as part of the sales process. When they bring an item to the till to you, you give them a fact about their item, you offer them a box or bag, you offer them whatever the promotion is. 
And so knowing that they're going to require a fax from you at the point of sale and giving that on the day gives you a real bonus. It shows you've done some preparation work and you're not going into this lightly. Now that doesn't mean you need to go and binge watch every single Disney movie like I did, literally. A lot of the times in group interviews, people think that they have to be the loudest or they have to be talking all the time and actually that's really not the case. All they want to see is that when you speak, you're courteous of other people, you're not interrupting, that you can interject when you feel like it's necessary to interject, and then what you say is valid. And bouncing off other people is also really helpful. If somebody else makes a good point and you think you have something to add to that, feel free to do that. So if Marie beside you has answered a question on who her Disney character is and she has said, yeah, her favorite Disney character is also Moana, you're going to interact with Marie and you're going to say, oh my God, Marie, that's fantastic. My favorite character is also Moana. You're going to let her finish and you're going to head into your spiel about why you love Moana. It's all about that interaction and engagement with people in a really positive way while not interjecting too much and then also showing off that level of knowledge with what you say. Even a couple of sentences can leave a lasting impression on somebody Another of my top tips would be to really stay engaged and put yourself out there. Now, I mentioned in my last video, and if you haven't seen it, I leave a card to it just up above, so I'm not, I hope I'm not repeating myself too much. I mentioned that I suffer from anxiety, and the thought of a group interview was panicking me for days, literally days. And when I walked into the interview, we were sitting down, we were casually chatting, and then the topic of doing a play or a performance came up, and I'm just sitting there with my heart racing, like wanting to die in a hole. But the only thing I can say about that is that if I was like that, I can be pretty certain that everybody else in the room was like that unless they're so used to acting in stage school that it doesn't faze them to get up and do improv. That's not something that we would do on our normal everyday lives. Well, not me anyway. And so it frightened the life out of me. But what I learned from that experience was that throwing myself into it and really giving it my whole heart was the best thing that I could have done. Because other people feed off that energy and it makes it a lot less of an awkward experience for everyone and actually it can be a lot of fun. So if you can be that driving force behind the confidence of the group to get up and do a performance and put a performance on with strangers, people you've never met before in your life, that is going to make you stand out. You're already displaying skills that the interviewer wants to see. And that aspect of our putting on a performance on a whim is actually really important because there can be days where say a dad and his kids will come in and say, oh, it's Jenny's birthday and I was wondering if there's anything special you could do for her. And actually in Disney stores, we do have little special birthday party celebrations where you get a little badge and a sticker and a card and the whole shop will stop and sing to you. So being able to stop stop everything and get everybody riled up to sing happy birthday to a five-year-old is something special that they would really love to see from you. I know it's easier said than done, believe me, and looking back in hindsight, it's easy for me to say these things, but honestly from experience and from what I learned, that is the best advice that I could give on that point. Oftentimes the interviewer will want to know if you have an interesting fact about yourself, an interesting skill, an interesting hobby. Pick something unique, genuinely unique. Not that you just spent three weeks in Disney World. It's not enough. They want to get to know you and really they're trying to do that in a very short amount of time. Have you done skydiving recently? Did you recently take up knitting? Because when you leave, they're gonna say, oh yeah, that was Michael. He was the guy with the bearded dragon. God, I really liked his performance and I really liked that he said this and he did that. Those are the kind of things that are gonna get you the job. So try and be interesting. Try and stand out from the crowd. And also if somebody else says something interesting, Converse with them and spark a little conversation among the group. That will also ease the tension. I think in a really succinct way, the point that I've been trying to get at with all these tips is to just be personable, be comfortable and be yourself without interjecting too much. A common question that the interviewers also like to ask is what do you think might be the hardest thing about working at the Disney store? And I think if you can have this prepared in a group interview setting, you're at a real advantage. Just have a think about it for a second. What do you think will be the hardest thing about working at the Disney store? Now remember, they're long days, they're long hours, they're hard on the feet. It can be hard taking orders from management, even they may be the loveliest person in the world. Some days the fact that there has been a spillage downstairs is not what you want to hear. For me, I said the hardest part will be leaving my cares and worries at the door before I went into work every day. I think it's important to get across to the interviewer that when you cross the threshold 
of that stage, you are a different person and you have the ability to perform and to engage with the kids that are coming in asking you questions and are so excited. You standing there with a glum face, thinking about the row that you had with your mom this morning is not going to get you very far. But if you are able to leave your crap at the door and you're able to convey that you know that that's important in a group setting, I think you're at a real advantage. Remember that this is your one chance to impress the interviewer. There is no one-on-one -on -one interview for the Disney store in Dublin. Again, I can't speak for other stores, but I get the impression that this is a very standardized system across the board. If you really want this job, you've got to make these things known in the moment. And if somebody else says them, that's completely fine. Don't worry about that. You can say, yeah, I agree with that and add a couple of sentences on to what that person has already said. I would say that it would be really, 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 really useful to have some answers to some common questions prepared. So I already mentioned the common question of what do you think will be the most difficult thing about working at the Disney store? Here are a couple of others that I think you should really have answers prepared for and prepared for well, alongside who's your favorite character. Have prepared, how would you handle a difficult guest on the stage that is causing a scene and perhaps there are kids getting upset? How would you handle that situation as a new cast member? So you've been working there a couple of weeks and you've just finished a nine hour day and your feet are absolutely killing you. But you know that there is a fresh group of cast members just after starting and they're really struggling to get through the last number of customers on the till. Do you go home or do you stay and help them? Another common thing that you might be asked to do is to sell a product. So for my interview, for example, there was a group of kind of plush teddies and different bits and bobs in a bucket in the corner of the room. And we were asked to sell that product to the interviewer. I know, I know you're sitting there and you're going, what the actual F, how am I supposed to do that? And it's tough. But again, it comes down to putting yourself out there and just going with the flow, whatever it is, you can be guaranteed that you have some sort of connection to it, whether it's a kid's toy or a teddy bear or it's a stationary set or a pair of pajamas. You're gonna have some link and connection to that product. Whatever the thing is that you're asked to sell, you can be guaranteed that there's at least three things that you can say about it. If it's a plush teddy, say of Lotto from Toy Story, you know that it smells like strawberries because you've seen the movie and you already know this fact. My point is that it's not going to be something completely random that you have no idea how to say a couple of sentences on it. I would say that being up to date with Disney releases is not super important, but it's also important in the sense that a lot of the time as we get older, we tend to stick to the classic films that we know, the Cinderella's, the Mulan, the Pocahontas, and we may not be up to date with what's current and with what kids are watching these days. Just have a general gist idea about what kids are watching these days. My final tip is just to relax and be yourself and just try and enjoy the experience. It's incredibly scary. It's not a nice thing to have to go through, but if you prepare well, you kind of take on board some of the things that I've said in this video, you will be so much better prepared than you could possibly realize. I don't think I've overlapped too much in this video as to what I said in my last, so it might be worth going back to watch that just so you're aware of some of the stuff that you might be up against. I think my three things to take away from this video will be to be confident in yourself and in your knowledge and what you know about Disney as a brand, to be engaging and to show off your bright and bubbly personality that I know you have. If you're applying for a job at the Disney store, I know that's the kind of person that you are, so make sure you show that off. And inhibitions. Just lose them completely and go with the flow. Throw yourself into it because you really never know what might happen. Okay, everybody, that brings me to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me a message. Connect with me on my social medias. Drop me a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you did like this video and you found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share it with some folks that you might think it would be helpful for. And if you really enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit subscribe so I can see your lovely face again. Bye.